Hi, tonight's biohacking chat is all about the company Simprove. I am joined by founder Barry, and I will be discovering how it works and why it works. Join me tonight where the chat is Simprove. Very good to see you. Hey. Okay, right. What I wanted to do was introduce you because obviously my followers understand, you know, Simproves a great product. But when I came to visit you just before the lockdown, I was really blown away by your backstory and how it's because I had the idea that it was, it's, I mean, obviously it's a technical product, but I had the idea it was kind of very industrial, you know. And I got the impression that it was very lab based. But when I came to your farm, I was completely flabbergasted at how organic it is and how, I mean, it just the amount of fresh air and, and your whole story. So I've got a few questions here. I wanted to fly, fly through with you, if that's OK. Just yeah, that's uh, fine. OK, fantastic. So can you tell me when and where Simprove was created? Okay, so um, what happened was that uh, myself and my wife Anne um, decided to go and look for uh, the good life and to go and become market gardeners. And uh, we did that for a while. And then on our small holding, we then had uh, decided to have a small beef unit. And uh, my background training was as a military nurse. And um, I had a friend who was a, a marine mu uh, biologist, and he was explaining to me the very poor quality ingredients that go into animal food. And at that time, whether the rules have changed now, but at that time it was um, uh, included uh, sawdust, chicken feces, rendered waste from, um, from abattoirs, uh, laced with antibiotic, and then put uh, a steroid in the animal's ear to make it grow on what clearly is a very poor quality food. So the way Simprove came about was uh, through complete serendipity in that the idea was that if we could germinate some grain, um, we would have a very high quality food, we'd know exactly what it is. Um, and we did that, it worked very well, except it would go mouldy very quickly. Yeah. So um, the marine biologist uh, friend uh, chipped in and said, look, if we use uh, bacterial formulation in cascade so we can pickle the grain, then we'll give it shelf life. Like, so like a fermentation, I guess, like yeah. what, we, what yeah. we do, yeah? Exactly that. So, we used the bacteria to ferment the grain. It gave it three months shelf life. And rather than it just being a feed, we realized that it had this very beneficial effect on, particularly on young stock, where um, mortality levels can be very high. Yeah. And, and uh, they can get quite a lot of uh, uh, digestive problems because of the intensity of a modern agricultural uh, farming. And so this was a look to us as though it's a way of um, negating the overuse of antibiotics and having a very high quality feed. And then, and to get to the point about how the sim group came out of that was that we basically we've been developing this as a family business for 34 years. The first 20 odd years was cutting our teeth on learning how the technology might work within agriculture on all sorts of species and with vets. And then, um, because British agriculture was in a very poor state at that time, we uh, made the decision to uh, try and transfer the whole idea to people. And that took another 14 years to. Um, working with King's College London and uh, UCL um, School of Pharmacy to take the idea and see if it would translate over to people. And so um, Simproof was essentially a, re a research and development company trying to um, replicate what we'd seen agriculturally for people. Fantastic. So obviously that was about, just by chance that you noticed that the, the cows were digesting better. Obviously they've got a different digestive system to us. Probably, I'd, I'd hesitate, a little bit more complicated than ours. They have four stomachs, don't they? And I'm sure with all that, all that intestine, there is tons of inflammation and huge rates of mortality. And so was it, do, were you seeing like the calves last longer? What sort of digestive issues were you noticing that were going? And what sort of like diseases were you mitigating with this fermented barley? Well, again, the uh, situation has changed a lot since, and there's a much uh, higher levels of control and husbandry. But at the time, we're going back to 19, eight, the late 1980s, it was quite commonplace for a calf to be taken from its mother immediately at birth because the, uh, the farmer wanted the milk and the calf went to market. So uh, now the rules have changed and the calf gets the opportunity to have um, colostrum mother's milk for a period of time and all that sort of stuff. So what I was doing as a... As a I went, one day I was a sensible farmer buying the right quality of calf for my calf unit to rear them on. 
And uh, I suppose my nursing hat came on and I see the very sick animals in the market and I was buying stuff that would generally be dead the next day. And it right. just became a competition to see if you could pick these animals up that clearly have been, um, have been had no opportunity to get their initial uh, bacterial flora that they would get in the natural yes. world. Of course, because that's where a calf would initially get its flora, the bacteria from its mother, wouldn't it, basically? Yeah, exactly. And they were, they were missing out on that. So this is where your product came in, I guess. Yeah, so we were sort of filling that gap. And then we sort of <clears throat> we learnt a lot of how it worked, and then it sort of went to the extreme. So if you imagine you have um, animals that uh, are genetically refined to be grown intensively, like our British agricultural animals, that's one thing that has a certain level of mortality. But the thing that really uh, pushed the project forward was that um, farmers in, uh, in Africa were looking to... Uh, to do ostrich farming on an industrial scale on bigger numbers. But they're, of course, not genetically refined to be grown that intensively. And right. so it was quite commonplace for the chicks that were hatched to lose up to 80% of them. And the technology was taken there, and that was what gave us the biggest boost, really, because we dropped the mortality from 70 to 80% down to just a couple of percent. That actually becomes quite exciting, uh, from a, not only from a commercial point of view, but from... From a research point of view, that's incredible. Yeah, so that is incredible. And it was that sort of, and it was only collected as layman's data. So it was Barry, sort of. I'm not a scientist, but I can measure and count and and uh, and calculate. And there was a lot more alive. And I I took all those numbers, and it was those what they call laughingly Barry's story time that convinced the medical teams that there there might be something in this. Okay, so I mean, you've got all this data. How do you start realizing that this could potentially, because bearing in mind, I think only now are the general public beginning to shout out about their gut and how it affects every sort of major system in our body. How did you 15 years ago begin to think, hang on, this could be a real pioneering piece of kit for Joe Public, who obviously, you know, we've got so many diseases around, tons of IBS. How did you suddenly make that switch? Well, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't difficult because I'd experienced, along with quite a lot of vets, how you could help animals that had um, uh, digestive problems. Um, and uh, it was a fairly uh, common sense uh, flip to make, although I would agree with you, it wasn't really understood at all by many people. It was regarded as muck and magic, no science, it's not a drug, it's a food supplement, um, and um, there's very low levels of evidence. So what we did was we, we made the decision not to sell product, but just to try and work uh, as an R&D company to try and get some efficacy, uh, whether it was in vitro, uh, in the lab, to find out more about the science, or if it was uh, with uh, in, in vivo in people, and then we then we collated that information, and of course uh, we're in a very difficult position then because you have a food supplement that uh, you can't make a, any medical claim on that. So um, it was a matter of uh, the information being carried by word of mouth, and people were using yeah. it to help themselves generally. Well, I mean, personally, I find that word of mouth with most things is normally the best way. You know, I mean, it's a very, it's a very powerful place, the school gate for information on gut health these days. <laughs> it really is, honestly. That's all we talk about. Okay, so can you please explain to me how your product works? I'm going to, what I'm going to do is when we, when we edit this, I'm going to be able to put in some slides so people can go back to it and see like what you're talking about as well. But can you explain to us in layman's terms why Simprove works? Okay, so I've got a few slides, so I'm going to try and do a science piece, um, which uh, it's just it's, it's going to be, I've got my able assistant, Amy, to help me turn the cameras around. Thank you, Amy, in advance. <laughs> no problem. So um, the idea is to try and show you some slides, because uh, you asked for some science pieces, and it's very difficult to decide what to choose from a science perspective, because um, we've done an awful lot of work in people and in uh, bench, what they call bench and glass work, uh, and uh, the piece I decided to choose was some work that we've done in vitro on a lab, in a lab called ProDigest in Belgium, and they specialise in running a thing called the Shime system, which is a, a, a simulated digestive tract. And what that, what that enables you to do is to take a poo sample from someone, run it through the system and take measurements of things all the way along. And I've tried to put about 800 pages of data into um, five cartoon slides here. So um, the data is about um, what happens to a whole host of uh, different 
people's poo, whether they are very unwell, extremely normal and well, um, or specific ailments, and then to take that, those measurements, not in people, but through the SHIME system and see what happens. <clears throat> so I've got to try and get 800, page, 800 pages of data down to five slides and tell you a story about going to a party. So we're going to I give it a go. completely trust you can do that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the gut. You've got to remember that your microbiome is um, around you, within you, um, and on you. And the piece that we're going to talk about is the part that's in you, and the bulk of that is within the colon, which is the fat bit around the outside here. Um, and uh, there's about two kilos of uh, live bacteria in there, and uh, there's, there's billions of them. It's a huge number. Don't even think about the number. Okay. So, um, so what we're going to try and do is tell the story about um, the vine. So we're going to focus down. We're going to focus down on this piece here. And it's quite important because on this section here, we're saying that what Simprov is able to do is to arrive at 100% at this point. So it's gone through uh, being taken on board by, uh, through the mouth and through the uh, stomach and the, and the acidity of the stomach, all through the small intestine and 100% arrived there. So, okay, I've fibbed a bit here because that's 99.4%. I'm calling that 100% because there's a 1% yeah. okay. error. Okay. So, so when they arrive there, they're doing something very special because they're lactic acid bacteria, they're churning out lactic acid. That's what they produce. And by measuring the lactic acid at that point in the bottle, so to speak, on the, on the system, you can calculate that all of our bacteria arrive there. That's a very special thing to be able to do. So now what we're going to do is going to focus down onto the uh, colon itself. And we're going to focus on the bacteria, not all the other stuff that's in there, because obviously there's molds and viruses and yeah. all sorts of other stuff in there. But because we're a bacterial company, we're going to focus on the bacteria. And what we've got is the red guys with the spikes on there are going to be the baddies. The orange guys are the opportunistic ones. They're the ones that can live okay with you, but if they get half a chance, they can become pathogenic. And then you've got the good guys, which are the round guys, commensal bacteria. And what we do is we rock up at the part. Oh, firstly, I should say that this is a slightly off-color um, uh, gut because all of the Western world's gut is off-color, except for the, the, the exception, exceptionally few who make a big effort to keep their microbiome working properly. But generally, we've lost 50% of our microbiome in the last 80 years. And uh, so it's, it's not the best of places because of the destruction of, um, of bacteria generally because of overuse of antibiotics, uh, processed food, and a whole host of other things, sterile living, over-disinfecting, all that sort of stuff. So, um, so we're, we're saying it's slightly dysbiosed. But what we then do is we rock up to um, this position with our full bacteria on extract of germinated barley, which is the brown, brown blob around the outside. So it's a prebiotic and a probiotic, full bacteria. On okay, so you wouldn't have to take a prebiotic with Simpru then? Well, there's, a, there's two forms of prebiotic here. The prebiotic that I'm depicting in this slide is the barley itself, which is the feed for our bacteria. And the second level of prebiotic is because, as I've just said, we're producing lactic acid. That is a prebiotic to the good commensal bacteria, which I'll show you next. So you see the arrows coming out, they're churning out lactic acid, and they feed the good bacteria, which start flashing and enjoying themselves. Great fun. So now we've kicked off the party. But once they start to function, they start to produce stuff as well. They produce something called short-chain fatty acids. Let's not get too deep into that. It's, okay. more, food, it's more food for the party. Yeah. So they produce food. And that food um, uh, is, uh, is propionate and acetate. And those two short-chain fatty acids also feed the good commensal bacteria. So now the parties are really rocking. And uh, they all then start to produce butyrate, which is the sort of end output of this process, which is a very important short-chain fatty acids for your general health. So that's all good so far. So we're now going to take it to that one step further and say, well, what about um, a bifidobacteria? Everybody says you should, you should have a bifidobacteria in there, Barry. Well, we don't actually need one because on all of those poo samples that we took, um, on every single case, the bifidobacteria that belong to you went up in number. Now, this is really important because that's the bacteria that belongs there with you, so it's less likely to be transient. And what we do is we stimulate your own bifidobacteria and all of the other bacteria to perform better. So the key thing here is we're gardening your gut so we're ensuring that the right food i.e lactic acid mm -hmm. is going to all of those good bacteria so they produce more food and the bifidobacteria the one that one of the important ones goes up in number across all of those uh, people that we tested two samples we tested so 
where do we go from here? If you do that, because the lactic acid is churning out um, uh, uh, something that's of a, a lower pH than neutral, you change the pH. And if you change the pH of the gut, you take away the environment that belongs that the pathogens prefer, which is a neutral pH. Now, we're not saying that we can get it down to pH 4 because we deliver our, our bacteria pH 4 and it's going into a, a, a sort of large area and it's not going to move everything down to 4, but it will move the pH down slightly. And if it moves it away from 7, which is where the bad guys like to be, then you actually start to reduce your pathogens. And guess what? You're doing it yourself. So you notice that I didn't say kill the pathogens, I said reduce them. So you push the yeah. bully into the corner and um, you reduce the bad guys, the good guys perform, and you end up having um, uh, mastered your own environment and farmed your own gut. So it's like, it's like uh, running your own garden. So uh, would, by that sort of hypothesis, would I sort of say that things like, um, I mean, not to be too specific, but you've got your H. pylori and you've got like a load of viruses in there just naturally anyway. Would that kind of like, if you have your good bacteria, would they just kind of like push any sort of like those bad guys just to the side and thus reduce symptoms, I guess? Once you have a decent population of bacteria, I suppose it doesn't matter what's in there because they're not going to be able to do anything. Well, each, each one is different, of course, but um, H. pylori lives in a very specific part of the, part of the intestine, which is just after the stomach uh, around the sphincter there. Um, and... Uh, we have no evidence on that particular one, but we do have uh, in vitro work showing that you can uh, potentially uh, outcompete um, a harmful bacteria. And we have a list of those uh, where you see that you can push, as I say, the bully into the corner and enhance uh, the, the good, the good commensal bacteria and put your bio more in balance. Fantastic. Uh, now, what I wanted to just quick, because I know we've only got we've only got a short amount of time, and there's so much science here. What people get confused about, what I was fascinated to hear, what you tell me was how your product gets past the stomach, where other products fail miserably. Okay, so uh, the acid, you know. Yeah. So the, the, the special thing that we do is we we take them um, our, our bacteria, the, the bacteria that we have, core stock bacteria that are banked in a in a specialist. Uh, a, a site in Aberdeen and we draw down that core stock bacteria and uh, many people just sell that freeze-dried bacteria but, but that's yeah. just our start point what we then do is we germinate barley to, to generate the perfect food for it so if you imagine you're in a lab and you wanted your bacteria to grow at its very best you'd grow a perfect agar so it's like a perfect agar which is extract of germinated barley and then we put the bacteria on that and we get a, this massive multiple in numbers but more importantly you've made uh, the bacteria active, uh, fit for role, and you, they've um, trained themselves to live at a lower pH because they, they've fermented and they've come to pH 4. And uh, what we've done, the, the evidence that we've show, shown, particularly using these in vitro models, is that if you put in, in Simprove uh, through the, uh, going through the stomach, you'll get 100% survival, especially if you use it it in the fasted state before your stomach juices have started to kick off to digest whatever meal might be on its way. So that's why we um, advise, because that's what happened on one of our studies, is that you actually uh, take the product uh, when um, the uh, first thing in the morning, um, and because it's of a low pH, it will go through without too much damage before your pH starts to get more, more volatile to digest your bacon and eggs, if you see what I mean. So that's yeah, the rationale between the, the small break and is there something to do with the fact that it's a liquid helps as well rather than a tablet because I, I was under the impression tablets just get chewed up by the stomach acid and just identified as maybe something not quite right for us to digest in the first place yeah you, you, you're going to have a, a protection quantity so the 70 mil shot is, was uh, worked out from the basis of um, how much we were feeding livestock and it works out uh, around about 70 mils for a human and that gives you um, a protection for the bacteria because that whole um, uh, uh, mash of bacteria and extract of barley and liquid is all at pH 4. So you, you have a protective um, army coming through. Fantastic. Now then, you have a brilliant 12-week program. Why 12 weeks? Okay, so um, we, we endeavoured to work on 
um, evidence. Um, we're not allowed to talk about that evidence um, because uh, you, you can go and ask your doctor and your HCP to go and look at the evidence on a particular site that's for healthcare practitioners. But because we're a food supplement, we, we're not allowed to talk about those, those studies. But essentially, um, the, the evidence that we got was from a 12-week program. And what we, yeah. what, what, we, what we noted there was that um, the evidence suggests that you get um, 50% of the response in the first four weeks and the next 50% in the next eight weeks. And then uh, once you get past that point, well, actually, you only have to get to the first four weeks. In most cases, you, the, the client um, gets confidence in what we're doing. They normally complete the program and then uh, they have the option of going on to uh, a, a subscription program, uh, which reduces the price slightly. So it's quite interesting. Oh, OK. So you can um, basically set up a subscription for like the rest of the year, I guess. And as it, because I guess it's about you build up that tolerance, you repopulate your gut, and then you have to keep it going on. Otherwise, I guess you just go back to how you were. That's right. So, so they're, they're in last of uh, the sort of uh, overriding problem. If, if you, are on, I mean, some people do use the 12 week program, get themselves on song and really go flat out to make sure they've got all of their diet right, um, yeah. then uh, their, their um, fitness right, uh, psychological support, all that sort of stuff, and they can maintain the position. Other people, um, when they come off the product very quickly, go back to, the, to norm. And unfortunately, their norm is not a good norm, which is why they came on the product in the first to resolve their problem, if you see what I mean. Absolutely. So there's quite a lot of things you'd have to adjust. But um, uh, we find that it's the people that were um, more seriously um, affected with a, with a disrupted biome that are inclined to stay on for longer. And, and, and the number of people going on the subscription program is just going up. Like, like crazy yeah because i guess th there's no price for feeling good really is there there is i mean and just a shot every morning isn't that much of a commitment you know i mean it's not like having to slog it in the gym it's just one shot <laughs> and right. it takes seconds to do yeah and, and i think that um that the people um once they once they get the response, uh, that there's this feeling now, particularly after the situation we're in at the moment, where people are realising they have got to be responsible for their own health. It's very clear, which is why we've been out clapping. The NHS is there for emergencies, and it's our yes. own responsibility to look after ourselves and make sure that we don't um, uh, use the NHS for problems that shouldn't be there if you're managing your own health properly. I guess your product would work far faster if you followed a say an anti-inflammatory diet at the same time bearing in mind that people in, get inflamed to different diets you know because we're not all the same and that's what i've discovered on my journey of health that people do react differently to to different things i mean for example the gluten a lot of people have been asking me because you've got barley in your product is it gluten free will they flare up with the gluten Okay, well, the short answer is uh, it is gluten-free because there's a yeah. measurement there and you need to be below 20, 20 parts per million to be gluten-free. Um, we, we have our product regularly checked. Most of the time it's uh, less than 10. Once you get less than 10, that essentially means we can't detect anything. Okay. And, the reason, and the reason that gluten-free is, 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 is like a stacked system. The first thing is not wheat, it's barley, so there's less gluten. The second thing is you germinate it, so you change its structure. The third is, is you then... Um, uh, take it through a set of temperature changes and you squeeze out um, some of the nutrition. You then throw away the husk and quite a lot of the barley because there's specific um, sugars we're looking to, to get. Uh, you then have a very small proportion of that within uh, the product itself and then the bacteria have digested them to an extent because that's what they're living on. That's what so they're when, doing, yeah. So when you come to do the test, not surprising, I mean, there's, no, there's no gluten there. Of course, brilliant. But, uh, no, another thing is, my son takes it anyway. He takes the uh, mango. Is it safe for children to take? I've already given mine. My, my <laughs> um, uh, uh, the answer to that is yes. When, when we were doing studies originally, there was a whole load of exclusions. Uh, so they would be worried about um, people over a certain age and pregnant ladies and children. But um, I can tell you that um, it, it, its very description tells you it's safe. It's a food supplement. Yeah. Uh, and all of my grandchildren have been on it since they were very small indeed. And uh, they're, very, they're strong, healthy five grandchildren. And uh, I've made sure they've been on it particularly all the time uh, since they've been so And to, to be honest, if you think about the standard diet that our children receive 
just just if you look at the commercials on a kids tv show you see the cereal that they have you see the sweets the haribos and everything to be honest it's almost ridiculous that kids shouldn't have this anyway to to at least try and counteract all these really inflammatory nasty e numbers that are just being absorbed by them day in day out and preservatives everywhere i mean i think what we should do is literally push these on our kids in order to sort of combat what's going to come onto them for the rest of the day, you know, I think yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like a like, like putting some sort of defence mechanism for them. a protective a protective arm around their microbiome. That's what it is. Yeah, it's exactly, exactly. what it is. I think it's so backwards thinking to think that sweets are, are treats and this isn't. I just wanted to mention because of the sweetness as well, you do have sweeter in the mango and passion fruit because that's the one my son has. He, I've tried him on the original and he won't. Personally, I'm, I'm fine with either. Um, does yeah. the, sweet, uh, the sweetener have any effect on the bacteria? No, it's a, it's a very, very interesting point because um, um, initially we, we wanted to be um, all natural and we... Uh, did some initial uh, trial work with Kings and they came back and said, look, the most important thing for us is to have compliance. If the patient won't take the product, then you're never going to get the trial through this. <laughs> and, then, and so we actually added a, a, a sweetener, which is you know, less than 1% um, sweetener in a mango and passion fruit flavouring. Uh, we're advised by a flavour company, it didn't matter how many flavours you put in it, there'd always be somebody that didn't like that flavour. But we initially did that because they wanted to have compliance. Now, it's fascinating to see that I was trying to get the message across of the, of the original product, which a lot of people are happy with. But the actual breakdown is extraordinary post that event because it's 75% of our patients take um, the flavoured product. And that's because the Western world has been trained to have a sweet too. They have okay. sweeteners in everything. And, and uh, I mean, there are those that um, are happy and comfortable with, um, with the original. And, and I, I have this, uh, I know that lots of people say, oh, well, I didn't like it at first, but I've, I've tried it since. Now I couldn't go back to the sweetness. A bit like taking sugar out of your tea, really. Yeah. Um, you would just, uh, don't you, after a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. So, so that it came about, again, because we wanted to have effective science. Because if you started a study and people said, oh, I'm not taking that, I don't like it, you wouldn't have a study result. So yeah. the product that was tested was flavoured. Quite right. I mean, if I can just get my sons to have it, it's fine. You know, I know it's... I know they're conditioned to be sweet, so what, what more can I do? You know, I'm not going to start messing with the biology, like putting honey in it or anything like that. My it's kid actually rem reminds me, he said, Mommy's simple, you know? And he yeah. really enjoys it. He feels a bit special, and he knows he's looking after himself. And, you know, it, it, tastes, like, it tastes like pop, really. It's lovely. I think you've done a really good job. Um, can you tell me how often someone should take it? As in, so you do the 12-week then can you taper off a bit or, you know, do you have to do it every day or can, is there any, I mean, I, I do a lot of intermittent fasting. Will it break my fast? Maybe the, maybe the original flavor wouldn't because it doesn't have a sweetener in. I don't know how many calories are in it because I like to give my gut a good 15 hours rest. That's, that's yeah. how I find. So how would you do that? How would you take it if you're an intermittent faster? Could you hold off till the afternoon? Okay, I think there is a calorie thing on the bottle, not so not, not number I can remember, but um, just just so that you're um, aware how, how that works. The best way to explain this is is if you look at a, a group of people who are really, really unwell and they get a, a very a strong response, not surprisingly, those people who've got their lives back just continue to take the product on a regular basis. Um, we also see people who... Um, do the course, feel better, and often write in and thank us. And because um, we've got computers now, not that I'm really into that, the techie side, but you can bet your backside that six to eight weeks later, their name picks up again, because yeah. they may have resolved their problem, but they're not maintaining their condition. So that, then you have those people that might try and use less. You have those that have a bottle in the, in the fridge and quite openly say, I don't use it every day. I just take a swig every time I get bloated because it takes away my bloating. So, right. and, and people are learning how to use the technology to suit them. Um, so yeah. it's, it, it's a very broad range. What we try and do is say, um, get your doctor to look at the HCP website, see the evidence, see the areas that it will be able to help with, and then learn how to use it for your system. It won't work for everybody, but I mean, um, neither do drugs. In fact, there's, the, 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 the big thing is, of course, there's no downside with our technology. Whereas that will be a downside with drugs. 
Yeah, of course. Of course there are. And the side effects from your product are very minimal, I'd imagine, compared to something like an antacid or whatever. Whatever IBS drugs are highly, highly addictive because they basically just mask what's going on and you kind of get to the root cause of it. And that's, yeah. you know, a, a bit of a, a, a poor yeah. population in your gut, you know? Yeah, there's been 500 people on uh, what's called randomised controlled studies, and uh, there's been no uh, serious contraindications. Great. And, and that's a very tightly monitored situation. So if anybody wants to, because I, I want to get to the, the offer you've kindly given us, because all my followers love an offer, and I do too, yeah. as you well know. Um, so I'd like to, I'd like you to just explain that anyone can get in touch with you guys. You're always on the end of the phone. You've got a helpline because I've been into your offices and it's like a big, happy family. You know, it's absolutely lovely. Everyone's there just having a great old time. I didn't want to leave. Um, yeah. but can they get in touch with you if they've got any queries, any questions and where can they find those studies as well? Okay. So, um, they need to, uh, there's, there's lots of, yes, it's a happy family and, um, it's a family business and, um, it's very strange with everybody working from home. Really weird. Uh, uh, but we're yeah. hoping that they'll be coming back soon. Uh, and, and everybody working from home has just been incredible. Uh, I even found out the other day that uh, one of our team picked up the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning and was talking to someone to help them through a problem. I thought, well, that is actually going above and beyond. It's just great. So um, so we, we have a, a, a regular team who understand the product. They're not... Uh, um, uh, healthcare practitioners, but they understand our product. Um, we also now have a, 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 a dietitian on, on board as part of our team, so we can help uh, with those questions. We know lots of people further up the ladder as uh, GPs and gastroenterologists and scientists who can help. So we've got quite an extensive network. Um, we're very proud of the care line because um, it does as it says, and quite a lot of people need some confidence and some encouragement about how to help themselves. Um, so that's one side. Um, and then what was the next part of your question? So it was uh, uh, the care line. Oh, that, that's just the, just, the care just, line. Just, the care, just, just where, they, where they can find the studies as well, because obviously a lot of people oh, yeah, yeah. need yeah. the support of their GP yeah. as well, and they just need to get that little push yeah. because we're also GP and all, you know, we always sometimes, particularly if you've had IBS for 30 odd years, you just want to have that go ahead from your GP before you try something. Sure. So, so the thing to do is that there is some information on the, uh, uh, the Simprove website, which is www.simprove.com. And then there's a healthcare practitioner website as well, which you can direct your healthcare practitioner to look at to get the, ev the evidential side. Um, and I um, uh, think that about covers it, really. Fantastic. That's brilliant. OK, so, Barry, thank you so much for joining me. I thoroughly appreciate it. I can't wait for you to get back. You must be crazy busy at the moment because obviously everybody is like oh my god there's a virus around i need to up my immunity i think it just you know having a great immune system just means you're going to mitigate the worst of the symptoms of covid not to mention every other bloody disease we've still got flying around you know so i mean i think you've got an amazing product i love it my kids love it and you know good luck with it thank you so much and barry and his uh, team have offered us 15% off a 12-week program, which would make a 12-pack for £134.30. The code is Davinia15, and it's valid once per customer. And it runs up to the 31st of May. So make sure you get it in. I'm going to post all the details. But once again, Barry, thank you. And thank you, Anne, for your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your time and interest. I appreciate it. No, I love your stuff. Good luck, guys, and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, yes. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.